Lots of ink has been uh, spilled on trying to understand the great mystery behind what really happened with the spies, with the miraglim in Parshat Shlach. How does a group of people, hand chosen by Moshe Rabbeinu, to go and prepare the journey of Bnei Yisrael, of the Jewish people into Eretz Yisrael, how do they turn around the situation so drastically and from hope, promise, and optimism they create mass hysteria and dissuade an entire nation from having the hope to ever enter the land. The most famous is the Ramban, in one of the longest Rambans on Chumash, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman, the great 13th, 13th century commentator from Spain, has a very long shtickle on the beginning of Shlach, and the Rabban really raises another question. In his words, Ma Pisha Momacha Tosa says, I don't even know what their sin was. Moshe Rabbeinu asked them to give him a report and describe accurately what they see. That's exactly what they did. You want they should come and say, We weren't terrified. The nations there are not mighty, there are no giants. It's an easy cake to swallow, no big deal. He asked for a report. They gave a report. Mapisha Machatosim asks the Ramban. Was willst du? He asks even more. If somebody made this mistake, it was Moshe Rabbeinu Lechayin. In Parshas Ekev, Moshe describes the terror of entering Eretz Yisrael in much more dramatic terms than the Miratla. In Parshas Ekev, Moshe describes to the Jewish people that they're passing the Jordan and they're going into Goyim G'doyim Sumim Mecca, you're going to confront mighty nations, mighty empires. Moshe, 40 years later, is inculcating equal fear in the Jewish heart in the Miracle the Surah Ramban asks Pasha Shlach. And the most common answer to the great question of the Ramban, he himself elaborates and many other Mepharshim, the Akedis Yitzchak, many others is, that the Ramban, the, Ramara, the mistake of the Miragam was not the factual report. The mistake was the conclusion of the report. They added one word, as the Ramban puts it. They come and say, we went to the, we went to the land, beautiful fruits. Ephes, Ephes. Ephes kiyaz ha'amayoshebar. It's one word. Ephes means, like we say in modern Hebrew today, Chaval al-Azman. Ephes. There's nothing doing. There's no hope. Loi nucha lalois. Loi nucha lalois. We can't do it. This we didn't ask you for. I asked you to find out how to do it. Not whether to do it. That's not a question. You're a spy. You're a scout. I asked you to find out what is going on, the roads, the highways, the nature of the armies, the weapons, the mechanisms, the culture, the people, the security, the watchtowers, the siege walls. Come back and give me a report. Whether to do it or not, now you're already crossing the line. Now you're stepping out of your boundaries. This was one famous perspective. There is, of course, the other aspect, and that is, how do they transform a people? They become terrified. They become intimidated. And as they say, uh, there's an expression, whether you believe you can or you believe you're, you can't, you're right. Because in many ways, our attitudes to things become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the most important component of leadership, especially in a time of challenge and stress, is confidence. The leader is confident, and the leader inspires confidence in his or her people. And when that lacks, it's not only you're missing confidence and it's replaced by fear, but you really can't do it anymore. Because the fact that you are so afraid of doing it really uh, depletes you from the energy, from the capacity to be able to do it. Somebody was shot in with me. An, an interesting story. I think it's a lesson for life. There was a man, and he had a job. 
was uh, quite a monotonous job. He would uh, upload and uh, unload merchandise on trains that would travel, you know, long distances. And uh, he was naturally a pessimist. He always spoke about how miserable his life is, and he's cursed. He doesn't have a normal livelihood, and uh, everything is difficult for him. This was his uh, motto, his mission statement in life. Life is miserable, period. Vahiyayoyim, one day, he had to upload some food on a long journey on a train that was going a 48-hour journey to Vancouver. Shaykh, he uploads the food, you had milk, and you had eggs, and you had some other dairy products. And uh, as he's about to leave, there's some issue over there, the doors close, there's a bar, he can't get out, he's stuck. He's stuck now 48 hours in this cabin, there's nobody around, this is a merchandise uh, train, and uh, it's before the cell phone era, and it's going to be a long journey, and there's one problem, he realizes, he realizes that this room is supposed to be refrigerated. So he starts writing his tafal. So he takes out a pen, he finds a cardboard, and he begins writing a letter to his wife, and it begins, I always knew something like this would happen to me. And I would end my life in a refrigerated train, dying from refrigeration, from frost. And uh, he writes his last will and testament to his wife and his children. And uh, life moves on. The, the train arrives to Vancouver, and the unloaders open the door, and there's somebody unconscious on the floor. They rush him to the hospital, and uh, they're shocked because he was unconscious, but the refrigerator wasn't on. <laughs> and uh, this tells the story of many, many people's lives. So in many ways, what happens with the Miraglim is a self-fulfilling prophecy. We really can't do it. We're grasshoppers. And they create this mood in the nation. And once you feel you can't, then you can't. But, after all is said and done, the big question still remains. You can understand all of these sentiments. Cross boundaries, go beyond your boundaries, change your mission, change your shlichus. Nobody asks you whether, we ask you if. Become overwhelmed and intimidated by fear and start believing that you really can't. It's a hopeless situation. We can understand. These are natural patterns of the human psyche. The question is, when we think about who these people were. As the Pesach says in the beginning of Parashat Shlach, when Hashem tells Moshe, Shlach Lecha Anoshim, so Moshe chose them, and the Pesach describes, the same Pesach that describes, the same Torah that describes their sin, Kulam Anoshim Rashi Bnei Yisrael Heim. They were all men, the leaders of the Jewish people. So the Kleyakar, humorously, or actually not humorously, says the problem is they were men, they weren't women. He came at the right moment. Kulam Anoshim, they were men, not women. If Moshe would have said women, that's what the Kleyaka writes. This is not a modern interpretation. The Kleyaka writes, if Moshe Nabeinu would have sent women, this you can give over at Yisham study. If Moshe Nabeinu would have sent women, all would have been good. Because the women were in love with Eretz Yisrael, like we see with B'nai Slav. But the problem is Kulam Anoshim. He said men, that was the tragedy. That's what the Kleyaka writes, you can look it up. Oisius Machkim was a fascinating Kleyaka. He says that was the Tsar, the Miraglim should have all been women. Anyway, but find Zosayim men, Zosayim men. So with all of our issues against men, but Rashi, Bnei Yisrael, Eimah, they were the leaders of the Jewish people. And even Rashi in Pshut Yisrael Mikra says, Loshin kol anoshim sheba mikra, loshin chashivus, v'oyis tashok sheirim hoyu. Quoting from the Medrash Tanchuma, at that time, they were kosher, they were worthy. Moshe Rabbeinu, who is the shepherd of the Jewish people, and certainly... The greatest prophet, as we just learned at the end of Baaloischa, Bechol Beisi Namanu, handpicked, he handpicked these 12 people, understanding that they are the most suitable from millions of Jews in order to fulfill this mission. They are Messiah, and the Torah goes to enumerate them. Here is the question How does this occur to people who Oisushok Shayim Hayu? of such great prominence, handpicked by Moshe Rabbein, even though they weren't handpicked by the Rebbeinu Shalaylam? To go through such a transformation, become so timid, become so intimidated, become so overwhelmed by fear, 
in contrast to a clear, direct promise of the creator of the world who took you out of Egypt and gave you the Torah with the condition to enter into the promised land. This is your ultimate destiny. This is your ultimate vision. What happened to these miragu? How did they say Ephes? How do they say Leilu Chalalos? How is it that they really start believing we can't when everything in Jewish history till now has been supernatural and miraculous? It becomes even more strange when we start observing the sugis in Gemara and Medrashim about the Miraglim. And there's a lot about this, but I chose two. One from Gemara and one from Zoya. One from the world of Nigel and one from the world of Kabbalah and Nist. Says the Gemara in Saita da Flamenea med Aleph, which is a whole sugi there about the Miraglim. Zog the Gemara, quoting the Pasig, Ba'am Noshim, Masher Olu, Imoy, Omru, Loi, Nuchal, Alois, El Ha'om, Ki Chazok, Humimenu. The ten men who came up with Kalev and Yehoshua, the other two spies, said, There's no way we can go up, Ki Chazok, Humimenu, because he, meaning he, the leaders, the leader, the leaders of the land of Israel, are stronger Mimenu. Mimenu means from him. Who is Mimenu? They are stronger from us. Meitamu. Who's Mimenu? Mimenu means from him. Who's him? Moshe Aaron. Amr Reb Chanina Bar Papa. Said Reb Chanina, the son of Papa, Dover Godel, Dibru Meraglim by Yisrashat. The Meraglim said something very dramatic at that moment. Dover Godel. Ki chazak hu Mimenu al tikri Mimenu el Mimenu kivayachu. The Mimenu is referring to him, Kivayochel Hashem, the Rabbi Nishalem. Kivayochel, Afilu Baal Abayis, Eina Yochel Ohitzi Kelev Misham. Even the master has no way to extract his own vessels, his own furniture, his own utensils from the home where he put it. He has a lot of Kelev, he has a lot of utensils, beautiful pieces of furniture that he put into somebody's house and he asked that person to watch it. And now the Balabayas wants to come back and take out his Caleb. And the man says, you don't walk into my house. It's my Caleb. I don't care if it's your Caleb. And he can't. The Miraglim said, it's his land. It's his Caleb. <laughs> it's, it's his world. He put everything that's there. Stuck. Caleb. He himself, Kibayochel, can't come do it. Now I ask you, how do you understand that? Mela, a person, an ordinary person has doubts in the existence of a creator, in the capacity of a creator. This is a world, Olam, the Gemara says in Psachim, Olam is connected to the word Helen, concealment, Nasa, Adam, Zagda Medrash, Haroit, Salitois, Yite. There's a lot of room for error, for confusion, for ambivalence in a very confusing world. We all know that and experience it. But here you're talking about people standing in the desert literally a year and a few months after the exodus of Egypt. Not 10 years, not 30 years, not 100 years, not another generation. This happened, the miraculum was sent on Chav Tes Sivan, the 29th of Sivan. Yitzhiyah Shmashayim happened Pesach. One year later they built the Mishkan on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. They did a second Karim Pesach as we learned last week in Baloischa. Chaf Iyer, they left from Har Sinai. It was the story of the Messiah in them, Kivra Satayvis, Gibran Lebedik. Miriam becomes a leper. Chaf Ches Sivin, the 28th of Sivin, she comes back into the camp. And Chaf Tes Sivin, Moshe sends the Miraglim. Erev Rish Chaydish Tamos, they're there 40 days and they come back, as the Gemara says in Tainus at the end, on Tisha B'Av, 40 days later, the night of Tisha B'Av. This is one year after Matan Taira, one year after Yitzhiya Smitzrayim. If you would have turned to the Miraglim when they were giving the speech and said, by the way, interesting, what did you eat today for breakfast? What did you have for breakfast? The eggs were with cheese or without cheese? You had an iced coffee or a cappuccino? I said, what are you talking about? We ate man. Really, where did, this, where did you pick up this man? Where did you pick it up? On the 59 or on the 306? They said it comes from heaven. That's what you had for breakfast. And for lunch and for dinner, the same thing. Mana from heaven. What did you drink after dinner? Oh, we have this rolling rolling rock that irrigates us. We call it Be'er Shalim, the well of Miriam. Tell me, how do you walk up and down mountains with all of these little kinderlach? Well, we have clouds that flatten the way. Tell me, how did you get out of a superpower Egypt? Nobody could escape Egypt. It was the superpower. The longest empire in history was the Egyptian empire. Well, the Amaisa with ten plagues. And how did you get through the sea? The sea was split. 
for these people, the supernatural was reality. There was an Israeli leader, he once said that Jews won the wars for two reasons. There was the natural reason and the supernatural reason. Supernatural way they won the wars is with the army. And the natural reason was through Tehillim. These, for these Jews, for, 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 for these Jews, the, na- the supernatural was the natural. Their breakfast, lunch, supper, day in, day out, was a supernatural existence in the desert. They experienced this firsthand, every single one of them. They stood at Har Sinai, they saw Matan Torah, they experienced Kriya Siamsov. They get up and they tell Jews, And the water converted to blood. How did that happen? How did the frogs appear? And how was the Makas Pchorus? And how was the Kriya Siamsov? And how was the Matan Torah? And how was the Man today? And tomorrow? And yesterday? And Be'er Shalim? And what are you talking about? And nobody says a word. Shashtil. Ba'yifku kolom, they're all screaming, they start screaming at Moshe Rabbeinu, and they say, what? Nitna reish, we're not what do we have to die? We're going to be defeated, no shame of it, ha'peinu, heal of us. I don't understand, a few months ago you just f- left pirates. So you'll answer that in Eretz Yisrael, there were 31 empires. Meman of If you're going with the natural, you couldn't even defeat pirates. If you're going with the supernatural, 31 empires. Machta chilet. You're going to make a big difference. This is very strange. They suddenly are speaking about Hashem. What's, what's the meaning of this? How does this transformation happen? Moshe Rabbeinu sent Koifrim. Even if you wanted, you couldn't be a Koifr at that generation. So you take a look at the Zoyar, and the Zoyar applies it to our generation. The Zoyar gives it a very contemporary perspective, a different angle. Zoyar Chela Gimel Dav Kufn and Ches Par Shishlach. Vayishlach Ayisa Moshe. They were all tzaddikim and they were all leaders of the Jewish people. Eita is in Aramaic is Eitzah. But they, on their own, decided to uh, seek on Eitzah bad counsel. Am I not Why did they decide this scheme, this Eitzah? To dissuade the Jewish people from entering the land. Ella Amru, this is what they said, the Zoya says. Iyalon Yisrael la'arev, the Jews will go into the land. Nisaber anan melameve reishin. There'll be new elections. There'll be new elections. The Rosh HaKol is going to be replaced. It's going to be in the order. Right? The young Hebra are going to say, there's young people in the shul, we need young leadership in the shul. We need a new rabbi, we need a new gabbai, we need a new Rosh Hashanah, we need a new board, we need new elections. The Saber Anan, we're going to be removed. The Yemana Moshe, Reish Nacharinim. Moshe is going to appoint new Nesim, new leaders. The Anan, Zakinan, Bimit Baral Amavarish. We had the privilege to be leaders here in the desert. Ava Baral Oyniski. There's going to be a change of guards. What do you think? We're still going to be the leaders in Eretz Yisrael. Val the notli ate the bishel and armayu maisu inun vuchal inun the notlon milai. And because they embraced this negative scheme, therefore they perished, and all those who accepted their words, the notlon milai. So according to the Zoyhar, it was a very simple issue. They didn't want them to go into the land, they were very happy to stay here because they would become ordinary folk, they might not be Messiah. Asks the Shem Shmuel, the Shmuel Sachachover, the Shmuel Bornstein, the son of the Avni Nezer, the Sachachover Rebbe, in his Torah on Shlach, I wrote Tov Shnayin He, Tov Reish Ayin He, exactly a hundred years ago, 1915. For he says, and he asks Gevaldik, the Yisrael have. You give an introduction. You tell me they're all tzaddikim and they're all manhige Yisrael leaders. Hayitochen. Beautiful words. We all have Nagias. Everyone is biased. Who's not biased? People are jealous. People want covet. People want power. People want influence. This is part of the human condition. What do they say in Yiddish? A mensch is not a mensch. A human being is sometimes a human being. And sometimes not even that. But everything has limits. Even all of us sitting in the room, we're not necessarily, I can't speak for you, I can speak for myself, we're not necessarily Tzadikei Hadar and Rashi Bnei Yisrael 
But when you know that the whole destiny of the Jewish people is about to unfold, and you have a part in the process, but you have a personal issue, and that is, right? When Mashiach is going to come, you may not be the president of your shul. <laughs> or you may not be the Maradastra of your shul. Or you may not be the Rosh HaKol, or you may not be the leader of this institution, that organization, that community. Okay, it doesn't feel good. You liked it, you enjoyed it. I don't know exactly what you enjoy about it, but whatever it is that you enjoy about being a leader, so Zayin is something we all know what Yeshua told Moshe Rabbeinu at the end of Baha'u'llah school, an elder that made that started to prophesize. Yeshua says, Adoni Moshe Kloyim. What does Kloyim mean? So Rashi brings two interpretations, and the first interpretation is, if you hate somebody, just make him a community leader and all will be soft. Put on him Tsar and he will be finished on his own. By the way, you're excluded. You're going to be a leader after Mashiach comes, don't worry. So, uh, <laughs> so the point is, the Shemesh Shmuel says, we all have agendas, but there's a limit. You know that the whole Jewish people will be saved. Mashiach is finally going to come. But you're not going to be the leader of your community, so you're going to destroy the whole mission. It's a Pesafar Darwin kite that's not rational. It's a Pesafar unique Ashkosa. People do things for COVID, yeah. There's corruption, yeah. There's politics, yeah. Not here, but there's politics. There's superficiality, yeah. There's pettiness, yeah. Mentions and a mention. We all know that. We have eight Zaharas. There's different dynamics in people's minds, and you have to know how to navigate life amidst turmoil. But the Pesafar so I understand a person who's careless and clueless and, and lowly and brute and, and completely detached. I, I couldn't care less. It's a strong journey, destiny. I don't care. I want to be a leader. But the Zoya tells me they would say they can rush it when they stole. Ask the Shemesh what happened? I don't understand. Shadavar kazel lo yitachin afilu l'pashat shabapshutu. Even a simple, ordinary person, I wouldn't suspect this. Lahashchis. It's called Tikvas Yisrael to undermine the entire hope of the Jewish people. It's not a small thing. We're going Sunday on a field trip. We're going to go Sunday skiing or boating and they say no. The whole Tikva, the whole point, the whole objective, the journey of the Jewish people to their homeland. Virat and Hashem Yisbarach and the will of Hashem. And he adds, Vaham Tomer Sha'avas Ha'olam Chamdula Hamatomer the Hamatana and the gift that the fathers of the world, from Yitzhak and Yaakov, Moshe Rabbeinu, are waiting for this. Hashem keeps on promising. Ubinyam beis hamiknesh. Vikishur, this is interesting. Vikishur shamayim va'aret. What will happen is the, the link, the marriage, the knot between heaven and earth. V'chol ha'toyim v'shadoyim ha'koyim v'shadoyim 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 All this has to go down the drain because of a personal negi, a personal bias, that somebody else may be the leader, not me. And remember, social security you're going to get. Emeritus, what do they call it? The rabbi emeritus? What was the expression in the shows? Emeritus status to retain. By the dinner, they'll give you one. Stop shot, you're being fired, you're being thrown into the gutter. You won't be active duty. Who is Voss? Is Voss? You'll go into retirement, you with the Nasi in the desert, people will give you covet, you'll still get shishi, you'll still have a place in Israel, they'll even allow you to have your own old standard. They'll give you your standard. That's why nobody's allowed to go into it. It's a sapella. Ma gams a koyin v'reisha di Yisrael yasu kozois. Even with simple people, I wouldn't understand this. Tzadikim and leaders. V'oit. Then the Shem Yishmol asks a practical question. Does he really think Moshe is going to keep you in the position after you make such a churban? Did they really believe they're going to come back? They're going to give the report. They'll destroy the whole plan. Nobody's going to want to go in. And Moshe will keep them as leaders with such, such people who made such a nezek, such a damage. Did they really think so? So they won't gain anything anyway. No Eretz Yisrael and no leadership. God garnishes. They'll come out with nothing. This is the second question of Hashem Yishma.
So both the Gemara's perspective is very perplexing. The Zoyar's perspective is very perplexing. Let's see something else that's very interesting. Another source. Take a look at your next source of the Gemara Megillah Dav Chav Gimel Amen Beis. We all know a halacha that's prevalent in Jewish life every moment of the day. Not every moment of the day, but every single day. And that is Ein Dover Shemekdusha Pachas Nasar. Holy declarations and conversations and shuls, but in Midrashim you need a minion. You want a chazan to be able to say Baruch Hu in Kedusha, you need ten Jews. You want Kriya Satoira, you need ten Jews. Messias Kapayim, you need ten Jews. Akadish, you need ten Jews. Etc. This is a Mishnah, Masech the Megillah. The Mishnah goes through a whole list of basic holy things you need ten Jews. How do you know? How do you know? Zabdi Gemara. Minah Amemili, how do you know? Amar Rebchi Barabba, Amar Rebbe Yechinan, the Amar Kro, the Pasuk says in Emoir, V'nigdashti b'toich b'nei Yisrael kol dover shel b'kdusha le'e pachis masar. V'nigdashti, you should sanctify me, b'toich, amidst the children of Israel. So that means if you want v'nigdashti, you want to be mekadeh shem shamayim, you want to bring kdusha to the rabbin shalolam, it has to be b'toich b'nei Yisrael, you need asara. Frek de gemara mai mashma. Where do you have here ten? It says v'nigdashti b'soich b'nei Yisrael. B'nei is minimum two. B'nei, not ben, but b'nei. So two Jews, Macha Kedusha, Macha Kaddish, Macha Kriya, Macha Baruch Hu. Zog the Gemara, the Tony Rebchi, Rebchi alert, Torah Bryce, As ye toich toich, it doesn't just say v'nigdashti v'bnei Yisrael, but toich v'bnei Yisrael, that's a strange word, toich in the middle, in the midst. We learn out, toich from toich, what does it say, where does it say toich? K'siv hoche v'nigdashti v'toich v'bnei Yisrael, Uksiv Hasim in Parshas Koirach it says he bodlu mitoich ha'eda haza. When Koirach and his people create a mutiny against Moshe and Aaron, so what does Moshe tell the Jewish people? He bodlu stay away from this evil community, from this evil congregation, Ada, assembly of people. Va'asya, what does he call them? Ada. Va'asya, Ada, Ada. What's an Ada? So now we learn out Ada Ada from somewhere else. The Ksiv Hasan, it says there, where is there? In Parsha Shlach Benik, your darling Pasuk Chavzayin. Hashem tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Ad Mosai la Ada hara hazois asher heima malinim alai as tuna is b'nei Yisro. How long? How long will I have to deal with Ada hara hazois, this evil community? Rashi says right away, From here we learn whenever it says Eida, community, it's ten people. How many Meraglim were there? Twelve. Yeshua and Kalev remain Sadikim. Who's the Eida Hara? Only ten people. From here you learn that an Eida is called ten. The ten Meraglim are called an Eida. This is the source. So now when you want to know, how to say a davar shabikdusha? It has to be basara. Why? Because it says toich. What's toich? He bottle me toich haedi. You need an eida. Okay, but I don't know what an eida is. So the miraglim teach me what an eida is. An eida is ten people. Here we have a fascinating phenomenon. The source in Torah to know what and how to say a davar shabikdusha. As Rashi puts it right on the Pasuk, we know it has to be by an Eidah. What's an Eidah? How do we know what an Eidah is? From the Barami. And this, in our generation, emerged in a fascinating halachic discussion. Somebody wrote a letter to Moshe Feinstein, Zeich Tzadik Levroch. It's printed in Igris Moshe, or Rechaim, Chelek Aleph, I think, Simen Chav Gimel. And a continuation in Chelek Gimel of Igris Moshe, or Rechaim. And asked him a question. This is a very common question, especially in many, uh, in many communities. Are you allowed to combine to a minion a secular Jew? A Jew drives up Shabbos, 
right? Comes to his Chabad house, or wherever, whatever type of community. He's a Jew, did not grow up with Torah, did not grow up with mitzvahs. He wants to come to Shul, he wants to join, he's appreciating. Are you allowed to be a Mitzar of Dominion? What's the question? What do you think? Not so simple. What did Rabbi Moshe say? Yeah, what's his source? He says, look at the source of a minion. Who is the first minion? Look at the minion. Tzadikim. This is where Rabbi Moshe Paskin's Allah, fascinating truva. So a Rav attacks him, attacks him, criticizes him. How do you say this? Maybe it's only after, maybe after Moshe screamed at them. They did truva. They did truva. This is, so the Moshe continues the letter in Chela Gimel and Igris Moshe and Arachayim. And he says, what are you talking about? Look at the part. Not after they did Shuvah. Even if they did Shuvah, they probably didn't do Shuvah. It doesn't look like they did Shuvah. They died. This is the source of a minion. How do you know a minion? Because a minion has to be Eida. How much is an Eida around? So from the Meraglim we learn out. A Dover Shebik Dusha. Is Pach is not Pach is Masar. And it's a fascinating thing. You're dealing here with people who, as the Shem Shmuel said, destroyed the entire destiny of Klai Yisrael. They weren't just regular secular Jews, so to speak. Or people who don't know better, or people who didn't have an education. It's not even a mumer lahachis, certainly not a mumer l'tayavim, it's a person who's mamish a koifer beiker. And from them we learn out the Yisoyed of Ada Yoimazah, how do we say Adavr Shemekidush? How we are Mekadr Shem Shamayim every day of our life. The question gets a little more interesting. Take a look at the next source. Shulchan Aruch Eirachayim Simen Tov Kuf Pei. This is not a Medrash. This is not a Gemara. This is not a Farvorfene. A Farvorfene Sefer. This is a Halach in the Shulchan Aruch. Takes it from the Tour. You have the same exact Halach in Tour. Eirachayim Simen Tov Kuf Pei. And the Mechaber Rabbi Yosef Karo Shulchan Aruch quotes it. Elu Ayamim Shiru Bem Tzoros Lavi Sein of Eroi Lisan these are the days that Saras happened to our fathers, and it's a good thing to fast. These are known in Rishonim and Achroinim, the Mishnah Brura calls it, and in Aloha, tiniest tzaddikim. It's the tiniest connected to tzaddikim, and as you know, most of these tiniest are not practiced today by most Jews. They are not the tiniest that were instituted by the rabbis as obligatory. It's royal Isan Isbah. There are still Jews who fast these Tanesim. I know a Yid who fasted all of these Tanesim and many more. But it's Roy, it's special, unique Tanais. Listen to his list. Listen to his list. He starts with a calendar. Rishchaydish Nisan, the sons of Aaron died. Asara by Mason Miriam and Estala Kabeir. Tenth Nisan, Miriam dies and the well disappears. The Chavav by Mason Yeshua Benun. Chavav Nisan Yeshua. Yeshua passes away. Biyud biyir may seli akoyin ushnei bonav in ishbarin Hashem. The tenth of year, alien his two sons Chafni and Pinchas die in the Aaron his kidneys is abducted. Bechav ches boy chav ches yir may shmuel anavi shmuel anavi passes. Chav gimul besivin botlu avi kurim alalus lirushlaim and may rovim benavot. Time of rovim benavot he didn't allow the bikurim the new fruits to come to Yerushalayim. Bechav hey boy chav hey sir ben nerek reb shimon ben amliel ben reb shmuel ben reb chanin is gana koyanim. Three of the Asara Rugei Malchus we read about on Tisha B'Av and Yim Kippur, Rabbi Shimon, Ben Amlil, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Chanina, Skan HaKoyenim are all killed by the Romans on Chaf Hei Sivin. Bechav Zayin by Nisraf, Rabbi Chanina Ben Tragi, Mesei Vatari Rima, Rabbi Chanina Ben Tragi is burnt with the Sei Vatari, the famous story in Avayda Zara, Daf Yud Ches, happens on Chaf Zayin Sivin. Be'echad Ba'av Meis Aaron HaKoyen, Rish Chodesh of Aaron dies, the Chumash says clearly. Be'yud Ches Boi Kavaneim, Kavaneim HaRavi B'mei Ochaz, Yud Ches of, in the time of Achaz, one of the Malchi Yisrael, quite wicked, like most of them, the name Aravi, the Menoire, is extinguished in the first base Amikdosh. Here I come to my point. Be Yud Zayin Be'elu, you also have to fast. You know why? You want to hear what Yard said? It is. Mesu Moitziei Dibas Haaretz. The day that the Miraglim, who gave a negative report about the land, is the day they died. Tiniest Tzadikim. Not of an avil, chenid of a tragin, and the next one is Gimel Tishrei Tzad Gedalia. Hey Tishrei, the day Rabbi Akiva was captured and then killed. We commemorate and we fast on the yard site of the Miragel. Frek the Beis Yosef, the Beis Yosef on Tura Rechayim, 
asks casually, Lama iskino li sanas biyom shemei so wait see di bazaaret simcha mit boi boi siyai. They should start tikkun. But Yisrael doesn't know that at all the yard sites they started to shtel uh, shtel tikkun with herring and sponge cake. <laughs> they don't understand. What are you fasting? Why are you mourning? Simcha. Yisrael asks. But avoid rishoyim rina. Such rishoyim were lost. It's not a reason to be in grief. All the fasts are grief. It's Avelos. All the way from Nodav Avil down the line. Aaron Akoy and Miriam. Tzadik Yoylam. Suddenly, Nana Miragam's yard site becomes a new celebration. Another celebration, a source of grief. On the contrary. V'shema, he says, maybe he doesn't know. Neshloi Zochu, Shetaskabo, Shevosam, Mitzdarinam, Devistamer Shavu, Beloi Neskabo. It's a Chiddush of Beis Yosef. Probably they did shuvah and it wasn't accepted. So we're in pain for the fact that they weren't zoichah that their shuvah should be accepted. This is what the Beis Yosef says. The Shalom, Rabbi Yeshaya Horowitz, says from here you see that they would tzaddik him. They, they're in the league of Aaron and Miriam and Adam and Avihu. Now they may also sinned. But still you say, be cry by a Kaddish. There are sins and there are sins. Just because it's a sin doesn't always mean the person is a Russia. It's a distinction we sometimes have a hard time making. There are ugly sins and there are holy sins. There are ugly sins and there are noble sins. And just because it's noble doesn't mean it's not a sin. But just because it's a sin, it doesn't mean it's not noble. And the Shalom says, you see, they're in the list of tiniest tzaddikim. Even the Beis Yosef, the Beis Yosef tainas. They wanted to do tshuva. Other before have different interpretations. The Bach has his pirush. But if that's the case, we can already have a little talk, a little sweetness. That when the Torah wants to teach us how you say Adover Shabbat who is the minion? Who is the first minion from where we learn Adover Shabbat The miracle. I the whole point of the miracle was against Kedusha. It was a betrayal of Kvayt Shemayim. We're saying Akdishach Vinaritzach Kinoyam Siach Soit Sarfi Kodesh Amashal Shem Lechok Kedush. Who was the first aid that we were learning it from? The Meraglim, whose whole mission statement was undermine the covenant of Russia and the ability of Russia. Eino Yacheloi Sikhev. And then we put them in the tiniest tzaddik. This demonstrates to us the subtlety of the situation. Even in the earliest sources in Shulchan Aruch and Tur, these are not Svarim of Nister, these are not Svarim of Nister, these are Svarim of Halacha Mamesh. Pshut, pshat, pshat, pshat. On the surface level, they were Rishoyim, they weren't Tzaddik. Rashi calls them Rishoyim, Kshayim, Rishoyim, Moitziya, Diba, Sa'aretz, Bali, Lashon, Hara, etc. Rashi says in the beginning of, uh, of Shlach, why Shlach comes after Baal Eischam, because they didn't learn from Miriam, Rishoyim, Halalu, Rov, Olay, Lakhul, Musr. And yet we have this, this subtle sensitivity, what is a Russia? what is a Tzaddik, As I said in the beginning, a lot of ink has been spilled on Parsha Samaraglam, and it's still, it's still Shiurim and Svarim and Mafarshim and, and, and Marochis and Chiburim and ideas, etc. Over thousands of years, everyone has what to say on the Maraglam. Certainly, probably what I saw, the most original and creative interpretation. And I think one that speaks volumes about some of our challenges today, but also resonates with truth. You can sense, you can sense, sometimes you know you hear Apshetl, okay, what am I going to argue with you? But sometimes things, they resonate with truthfulness. Is the commentary of the Baal HaTanya in the Sefer Lekutei Torah Parsha Shlach. It's not just a commentary on the Miraglim, it's a Yisoyed in Yiddishkeit. In the Kutat Torah Parsha Shlach, the Baal HaTanya Vashokhan Aruch Rabbi Shnei Zaman of Liyadi, known as the Alter Rebbe, says, and I quote, it's, a, it's very long, two discourses, many pages, but I quoted a few lines just to get this Mahalach, a little bit. Hinei lahavin inyin diktuk loshen hakasuv b'mesha amar ma'oid ma'oid shnei pa'amim. 
When Colin, when, when Colin responds to the Miraglim, the Miraglim say, we cannot. We cannot go up. So what does he say? What's the Lashon? Toivo ha'aretz, ma'oit ma'oit. V'chein eretz asher izov ha'schuli. He says, the land that we passed, Yeshua and Kol, the land we went, is, is, is Zavas, Cholov, Vash, it flows with milk and honey. Why is that Negeir? Yesh Mahakdim, Shoy Rishin, Yen Amaisa, the Meraglim, Lamayla, Bamesh, Le Ratzu, Le Kones, Le Ratzu, Le Ratzu, Le Ratzu, We have to discuss the Shoy Rish of Maisa, Meraglim, Lamayla, to understand the spiritual root of what they did, why they didn't want to go in, and they denigrated it. The source is from the Arizal. The Arizal says in Eitz Chaim, the Shoyer Shameraglim umetchines Olam Hamachshava Hanikra Leia. The source of the Meraglim is from the world of thought, which is identified with Leia. Kihem Hayim Edoy Hamidbar Shemiknu Doy Deya. They come from the generation of the desert, which the Medrash calls the Doy Deya, the Doy of ultimate knowledge and perception. Val Kain Loyrotzu LaHashvilas Atzma. So they didn't want to lower themselves to go into Eretz Yisrael, which is associated with the world of speech versus the world of thought, which is identified with Rachel. They were connected with the Pchin of Leah. They didn't want to connect to the Pchin of Rachel. They were in a very high spiritual state. They didn't want to lower themselves and their generation to the world of mitzvahs maisias, to the world of physical material mitzvahs, to bring down the light of the infinite one down here below. For them, this was a humiliation, it was a, it was a denigration, it was a downfall because they were madrege gavoya moit. What is the Balatanya saying? This theme is discussed in his Maimarim, in the discourses of his successors, and in the Svasemes, in Parshish Shlach, he also discusses this theme, the Kitzer, in his own style, in his own way, but all consistent with this theme that's first articulated in the Kutatayra, based on a vote of the Arizal with Leia and Rachel. The Chidushi Arim, the Zayd of the Svasemes, the first Rebbe of Ger, Rebbe Chameir, Shusha Yagen Aleinu, Chidushi Harim, Rebbe Tzchot Meir, Alta of Ger. Gives a fascinating example. He uses the Yiddish expression of something that was very common in his day, known as an Edom of Kest. He says the Jewish people in the Midbar we're an Edom of Kest. What's an Edom of Kest? The father-in-law would take a gewaldic, a delicious, wonderful son-in-law for his daughter, and he promised him, you sit in my home, and you can learn for five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, and I will support you, your wife, your children, the entire family. You have no worries in the world, no concerns in the world. You remain sheltered in a world of goodness, of Torah, of Kedush of Yerushalayim. Says the Kedusha Harim, the Meraglim on Gevold Bleiben, we an Edom of Kest. This was their situation. They're in the desert. They're surrounded by Ananiya Kovet. They have the greatest Rebbes and Rosh Hashivas in the world. They have Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron who comes down and says, this is what I heard from Hashem last night. They're sheltered, they're protected, they're nurtured. No mortgage crisis, no rent, no tuition, no issues with health, no issues with sustenance, no worries, no concerns. Complete dvekas and intimacy with the creator of the world, the most exalted, utopian, euphoric, almost Mashiach-like existence. Complete dvekus, complete oneness with Moshe at their side, with Aaron at their side, with the Shechina in their midst, eating literally bread from heaven, drinking water from heaven without a single worry in the world. You gotta be nuts when you get such an existence. They knew you're gonna come into Eretz Yisrael, it's all gonna change. First of all, you're going to have to create an army. You're going to 
going to have to create a government. You're going to have to have farmers and businessmen and merchants. You're going to have to have a welfare, welfare system. Suddenly there's going to become politics. Who will do politics? Now you're going to have to run a state, run a country. Now you're dealing with enemies within and without. And this is not a Jewish state. Right? They say that, uh, I don't know if it's an anecdote too, they say President Eisenhower once met Ben Gurion. And he says, why do you look so depressed? I have 200 million people living here. You have 3 million Jews. Why are you so depressed? He says, you have 200 million citizens, President Eisenhower. I have 3 million prime ministers. <laughs> Jews are not citizens. Jews are prime ministers. You ever take a taxi in Israel? The taxi driver tells exactly how the government should run, how, how you should be dressed, why you're staying here where the country is going, etc. Even that's a taxi driver. In New York, you take a taxi, they don't speak for a few hours. They don't speak. In Israel, Baruch Hashem, they tell you everything, what you have to do, what you don't have to do. The Barabbim knew this, Sheishonim Tizra Sardecha, Sheishonim Tizra Karmecha, Vasafta Tvuosa, and then on the seventh year, everyone is going to be screaming, Manoichal. Suddenly, you need a whole economic system, you need a political system, you need a military system, you need an infrastructure. Now you have to start buying buildings and paying mortgages and doing renovation. That itself can kill you. The Gemara says, people call a boy to in this basket to put up one building. They have to build a whole country. The Gemara says, the Balatanya Tain is the Oba Madrega Gavoya Moid. And he says, this is the difference of Leia and Rachel. Leia was, Leia was deeper than Rachel. Leia is Oilam HaMachshava. Leia was far more spiritual in a way. Aloof, sublime. That's why nobody had a Hasaga in her. He touches by Yara Hashem Ki Snua Leia. People don't like that which they don't understand. That which you can't wrap your brain around, you don't like. You'll see when people speak about other people, right? As I'm a sugar nerd, as I those. Usually if you don't understand somebody, right I'm a sugar nerd. Maybe you just don't understand. We don't like things we don't understand. We're not cops. They challenge us too much. Rachel is a different Madrega. He says the Meraglim were from the state of Leia. That's what Arizal says. But he explains what that means. This was their time. Let's put it differently. The Meraglim weren't afraid of failure. They weren't afraid that we're going to lose. We're going to be defeated. You know what they were afraid of? Success. They were afraid of success. I'm not scared I'm going to fail. I'm afraid I'm going to succeed. Because when I succeed, it's going to stress you out. It's going to eat you up. You're going to come home at night. You don't know if you're coming or you're going. Now you're going to have to start schlepping to a sheer 9 o'clock at night after all day being abused by your boss. Within three minutes, he starts to death you you're sleeping. You're sleeping within three minutes. And then there's Shaduchim. And then there's Shalom Bayis. And then there's the children in school. The Brahms, what, what, who needs this? This is called Vekas with Hashem. Eretz Eichel is Yishma. It's going to destroy us. There won't be Jews anymore. There won't be Jews. This was their time. They knew Hashem said to go to Eretz Yisrael. But they felt... This is going to destroy their intimacy with God. Because in Eretz Yisrael is going to be a world of Teva, a world of nature. Hashem will be there, of course. But now you'll have to discover God in the raindrops that fall from heaven. And in the trees and plants that grow from the earth. And in the interactions in business. And in the traffic jams on the FDR. You're going to have to discover a new type of God. And then you'll have a Shabbos, you'll have a Shmita. Once in seven years, you'll have a Shmita, you'll sit in Koilu for a year. But uh, you wake up in the morning, there's a regular world. You want more, you want food, there's no mana coming down from heaven. You gotta go to Shul and steal from the lockers. <laughs> I'm just fucking concentrating. So the Chidush Shurim says in Gevold Zayn, An Edom of Kest. Comes the Svasemes. Comes the Svasemes. We'll soon go back to the Shtikul and Kutayr and says, This is Pshat and Zoyar. You have to know how to read a Zoyar. Zoyar is Nister. 
When you learn this to you have to know how to learn this to. So this is Pshat and Zoyar. Yeah, you can take the Zoyar, Berachel, Bitcha, Akama, with a grubbing finger and say, they pushed it, wanted to remain the community leaders and they were frightened. He says, no, there's something much deeper. They were Roshim. They were heads. And they knew when you come into Eretz Yisrael, they will not be Roshim anymore. They will not be heads anymore. What's the difference between the head and the foot? What's the difference? In the head, that's the source of all vitality. That's the source of awareness. The central nervous system is in the brain. The consciousness is in the brain. Life is in the brain. And from the brain, the nervous system transfers the energy and the instructions to the rest of the body. That level of head consciousness, the awareness, living life from an authentic, full place, that will be gone, not only for them, for everybody. There won't be heads left. Zuck the Svasem is Tafri Shlam the Tess. Tafri Shlam the Tess is what? Uh, 1879. Shlach. Isi the Zayra Kaddish. Kamaradim Chashvu Hacha Anan Reishin of Ba'ara Loi Niskili is Reishin. Here we're leaders in Exodus, we won't be leaders. Achim Lechayr and Nina Kivada, I call Masham Ram Aram and Hoya before Klaus Ben Israel. Seems whatever they said, they represented the people. The Kibach and Ifcher Uli Yisrael Chiv Ben Israel. Vada Hayu Ptelin El Atzibur. The Ech Nuchem Loi Mer Adam Shadibur Machmas Negiyas Atzibusa. He puts it different than the Shem Shmuel. They were Shluchet Atzibur. According to the Zoyer, they actually looked at everybody and they said, "We couldn't care less about the people. It's all about us." This is people you appoint as shluchim, so narcissistic, so self-absorbed. The whole generation was in a state of of of, of a rosh, of a brain, of a head. First of all, that generation that left Egypt and heard Hashem at Sinai, they are the heads of all of the, of all of Jewish history. They are the, the prototype. They're the leaders. They set the stage. They started the journey. Our generation is called Ikvid Meshich, the footsteps of Mashiach, because Jewish history is like a journey down the body from top to bottom. So you have the generation that's the head, that's the Rosh, and then you come down all the way to Ikvid Meshich, which is like the bottom of the foot, the sole of the foot. He says, Emes Hadavar. It's true. When you go into Eretz Yisrael, you're going down to the next level. They did not want to be dethroned, be demoted, fall down from the Pchina of Rosh. They experienced Hashem's awareness like the soul experienced in the brain. The brain feels everything. The brain is aware. The brain is the source of vitality, of consciousness. That was their relationship of life. For them going into Eretz Yisrael is like a soul being told, you got to go down into the body. The same thing. They were in heaven. They were in paradise. Now you have to go down to earth, to the foot. It's forced. It's forced. So what was the sin? He says, but they should have, they should have asked, what does God want? Not what do I want? That's what they should have asked. They were great tzaddikim. They made one mistake. Ask what Hashem wants, not what you want. I know you want to stay in paradise. I got it. I got it. I know you want to stay by the shver your whole life. What does Hashem want from you? You want to serve yourself or you want to serve Hashem? Extraordinary insight. They had to understand one more thing. If you take a look at the previous paragraph, take a look at the end of the shtickle of the Kutatari that I quoted. Not one meoid. They were looking for meoid. So Yeshua says, Toivot ma'oid ma'oid twice. Shal yidei Eretz Yisrael shalamata davke p'chines mitzvahs ma'isiyas. 
דווקא יום שך בחינס אירן סייף, בחינס מאוד בלי גבול, ובחינס אלמן סטימן ואלמן דסגלין, וזה מאוד מאוד בייס פעם, ומאוד אלמן סטימן ואלמן דסגלין. They said, you're making a bad mistake. You think that the ultimate vehicles is going to be in the midbar. That's not true. The ultimate vehicles will be in Eretz Yisrael. Why? Ki be'emes, ikir kavanasa yizbarich shi'i yedira b'tachtoinam daf. Because the primary objective of existence was you should have a dwelling place in the lower world. K'may merazal, the Medr says, in Medr shtanchum anasa yisava, k'adish baruch hu yisla dira b'tachtoinam. Yerboim shaloy the one to have a place to live. B'tachtoinim, literally in the lowest element of reality. V'shi'i enigle le'ein kol basar. The truth of existence should be exposed to every flesh. V'shi'i agilu l'matak mo'y l'mayla. The revelation should be below just as it is above. Adirabe, even more. B'yeser se'ez. Below, it's going to be stronger than above. Why? Because the Yisrin Oyer Abom Mina Choy Shech Dafka. The Kohelis Hoymel says in Ecclesiastes the advantage of Yisrin Oyer Mina Choy Shech. Literally, it means you get to appreciate light when you contrast it with darkness. Taitches the Balatanya, no. Yisrin Oyer Mina Choy Shech. The greatest light is the light that comes when you convert Choy Shech into Oyer. Toiva Oritz Ma'oit Ma'oit. Because since the ultimate kavana of existence was so therefore as a result of entering into Eretz Yisrael and going into the stress and burdens and challenges and vices of day-to-day -day existence dealing with your body and your animal soul and Yitzhah and all of the issues of life and yet, and yet retaining your dvekas, your connection. This is the ultimate objective of all existence. Don't mourn it, and don't run from it. Does it have challenges? Of course. The whole year of the Sanashan is one big crisis. All of history is one big challenge. It's the great risk that the creator of the world took to create a place of emptiness and darkness so that the human being should create, the Jew should create, Yisri Na'ar Yisri According to this, According to this perspective, a rabbi of a community called me the other day, another city, he's having a challenge. And the challenge is that uh, there's a few younger light by him, few, and this is a very common thing today, a few younger light by him, and they're great, they're great young men, and they, they learned in yeshiva all their life, and they got married, and they married wonderful young women, and they're building families, and they learned in Koilu for a few years, and now it's time to go out into the world in order to be able to support their family, and they're having like a shvira. He says he doesn't know how to, how to give them the tools to be able to do it. They feel like their life is, they're like, they're, they're in a state of, of they, they went out, and they, they, he said they're like, it's not so fun, they're in a state of, of shock and, and torment, and disoriented, and what's worse is they get comments from other people. And uh, it's very difficult. So I told me you have to learn with them this shtikl and svasana samakhatayla. This was the story of the Baran. This was the story of the Baran. The Baran says there's no Yiddishkeit in the real world. You want Tveikus, you want Tveikus, you stay here. We understand that. It's paradise. What's that's the man? And yet, yet, they were grace and neshamas. But they were making a historical error. The historical error was that the objective of Yiddishkeit was to transform the world. You have to be connected, of course. Can you stay connected? And not only you could stay connected, in that you fulfill the ultimate kavon of transforming the Chay Shech into Ayr. There's a beautiful word from the Belzer of Take a look. All on this Mahalach. Zagdeh. Says it Shlach Yud Gimel Tezayin Eilish Moisa Anoshim Asher Shalach Moisha Lasser Azaris VaYikra Moisha Lo Hitsheya Binun Yehoshua. Zok Rashi, why does he change his name? Is Spalei La Love Ka Yudke Yudke Yoshiachem Meyatzas Meraglon Hitsheya must become Yehoshua because Hashem Yudke should help you from Atzas Meraglon. The Gemara says in Menachem Daf Chavtes, "Be Yud Nivra Olam Haba, and Behe Nivra Olam Hazer." 
Yud is Olam Haba and He is Olam Hazen. It's beyond today to, 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 to discuss exactly the connection, but that's what the Gemara says in the Achaz. So the Belzerov says, what was the tefillah of Yeshua? For Yeshua, Yud ke Yeshiach me atzas meraglum. The atzas meraglum cannot put together the Yud and the He. Either you're in Yud or you're in He. The link between Yud and He they couldn't create. Either you're in Olam Haba, if you fall down in Olam Haza, it's Eretz Eichel you're going to be destroyed. We can't go up and re- remain Jews. It's not going to happen. According to this, we have a fascinating understanding of the structure of Parsha Shlach. Because what happens right after the story of the Miraglam? There's mitzvahs that seem completely random and irrelevant here. The first mitzvah that happens after the Miraglam is... The mitzvah of Nesachim. Many karbonas that were brought, they had to be brought together with wine, libation that would be poured on the Mizbeach together with the carbon, and the Torah goes through the Shiurim for different animals, different karbonas, how many Nesachim. What's the next mitzvah that comes out of Chala, the mitzvah of Chala. When you make a dough, you mix flour and water, you make a dough, you have to separate a part that goes to the Koyim. The end of the parsha, you have the mitzvah of Tzitzis. The end of Parsha Shlach. What's the connection? Comes the Svarsemes and says, this was the Torah's response to the Meraglim. The Meraglim were screaming, we're going to lose three things. We have the Man, we have the Be'er Shal Miriam, and we have the Anani HaKovet. We have the food from heaven, bread from heaven, Lechem and Hashemayim. We have what? Water that accompanies us, the well of Miriam, and we have the clouds of glory that protect us. We're going to lose all of it. And they were right. They were right. There would be no man and no bearish of you and no anamical. There's no clouds walking with, taking you and flying you from your house to work and from your work to your house. It doesn't work that way. There's no anamish mind. Maybe in 50, 60 years, they'll build the robots that fly, etc. There'll be something close to it. This was their time. When it comes to tzitzis, there's a fascinating Gemara. It's a few places in the Shulchan Aruch and Erechai, Melchus Tzitzis. So the Gemara says, Hakonov. What's the Nosnu al Tzitzis? Hakonov Psilchelis. What's the Hakonov? So the Gemara, Hakonov, Min Konov. Meaning, the Tzitzis, the fringes that come down from the Begit should be the same min, the same type, the same fabric, the same material, like the bag of the garment itself. The Gemara discusses, it depends if it's semer or pishtim, if the, if the tzitzis are made of wool and linen, then it's always pointer. But if it's another, if it's another fabric, then it has to be min kanaf, it has to be exactly the same material, like the bag itself. That's one of the Yisraelis of Mitzvah tzitzis. What's the connection to all of this? The Meraglim, there's a talus and there's tzitzis. What's the talus? The talus envelops you completely. The tzitzis are the little fringes that come out. Little chutim. You can't compare them to the talus. Hakonof min konof. The miraculum are living in a talus, in Anani HaKovet. They're gone. Comes the Torah and says there's a concept of tzitzis. Tzitzis is those threads that come out of the, of the talus. They're small, they're narrow, they're thin, they come out. But this is where, this is where you eat moist, this is what you kiss, this is the Uschart and Uschol Mitzvah Hashem. Life in the desert is like a talus. Life in Eretz Yisrael, you'll have Hakonof Min Konof. You'll bring the Kedusha into the Chutim, into the Kavim, into the lines, into the threads, much more restricted, much more narrow, into the physical, material reality, into the complications of your psyche and your life. Hakonof, but it's still going to be Min Konof. When it comes to the man, this you have chala. What's the idea of chala? You're plowing, you're sowing, you're plowing and you're sowing, and you're dealing with rain, you're dealing with insects, and finally you're harvesting all the uh, sidur, the past, the malachas of Shabbos. And then you're grinding and you're making flour and you're kneading it with water and you make a dough. And from that, you take a little piece and that becomes Kedusha's chala. Don't say Eretz Eichelos Yishver. That's not true. That's going to be your man. And the whole avoid in the earth is now sublimated and elevated 
Lias Loidira Betachtenim through the Chala. And you're complaining about the Be'erish Shalmirim, about the water. You're going to plant a vineyard with all of the headaches and turmoil, and then you're going to harvest your grapes, and you're going to press the grapes and squeeze the grapes and turn it into wine, and part of that wine is going to be poured as the Sochim on the Mizbeach and the Beis Amigdor. And this will be your Be'er Shalmirim. But what are you accomplishing here? You're sublimating and elevating the world rather than escaping it and just remaining in a utopia, which of course gives us a perspective of the miraglim with the tiniest tzaddik and why we fast on the day they died. It also gives us a perspective that Dover Shepikidusha, what's the idea of Dover Shepikidusha? Dover Shepikidusha actually is you tear yourself away from the physical world and you come to Daven and learn. This you learn from the Miraglim. The Miraglim were experts at this. The Miraglim, their problem was they wanted only Bigdusha. They wanted only Nakdisha whole day. They didn't want anything else. Fakert, they're the greatest minion. The problem is they didn't want to leave. They wanted to stay stuck right there. Why should you leave? By the way, it's interesting. I was once giving a lecture. It was a little bit of a complicated, uh, controversial issue. We are talking about feminism and men and women roles in Judaism. So one of the people started to scream, if you don't treat women as second-class citizens, why aren't they in a minion? Why don't you combine women in a minion? What's this mistreatment? So I looked at the woman and I said, you don't realize the great shvach for you that we don't combine you in a minion. The whole reason we have a minion is because we once had an old minion and they were called the Ten Miraglim. And Hashem said, I must say, How long am I have to deal with such miserable minyan? So, we bring ten men together every day to try to fix their mistake and be Mechadish Koit Shemayim. Women were part of the Chet Maraglim. Chazal tell us that the women were not part of the Maraglim. That's why the women all went into Eretz Yisrael. That's why we have a Shidduch issue, because there were more women than men. They never went into Eretz They all went into Eretz Yisrael. What do, you, what do they have with a minion? A minion is trying to be Mesach in the Chet HaMeraglim. You're lucky. It's not Shaykh to you. But the truth is, it's not just a Tzachos. Because the Yisoyed, the Yisoyed of the mistake, that you could connect the Hashem only in heaven, not on earth, this is a masculine mistake. It's not a feminine mistake. In Judaism, this is a masculine mistake that detaches heaven from earth. In the feminine Welt am Shaung, God is naturally found in earth. The physicality is l'chatchila chedek of ruchnis. That's the concept of a yamulke. What's a yamulke? Yarmulke has two words. Yare mekel. Right? You knew that. Yare mekel. Here is Hashem. Over your head, you have to remember you have a rebbein shalom. But where is he? He's above your head. By the woman, the whole body is a grace to Yamaka. The Gemara says, Isha, come on to me, It's born with a nice brisk Yiddish. That's why the Klayakar says, Moshe should have sent women, not men. Kulam Moshe, that was the problem. Hey, that's what they, he says, hey, Mechavah Vesasarit. The Jews were screaming, Nitna Roish Ben Ashuvah Mitzrayma, let's go back to Egypt. And the women were telling the Moshe, I've been a nice Mavchad. Give us a part of Eretz Yisrael. Because Eretz Yisrael is the link between heaven and earth, as the Shem Yishmuel says, Kishur Shemayim Varetz. And this is a masculine struggle more than a feminine struggle. And the Oymek Ka'inyan Bazer, why that has to do with the Shoyrish of femininity and masculinity and Nister and Kabbalah, it's Ein Kamamakim, it's not for today. But this is the, this is the Yisoy. And that's why Mitzvah Tzitzis, at the end of the parasha, summarizes it. Because the challenge from Talus to come to Tzitzis, that's the great calling of Parsha Shlach. From the Talus, from the Talus that envelops Roshe Verumoy in Kedusha, to be able to take that and bring it into the Tzitzis, into the structured day-to-day life which is completely involved in Gashmias. This is the great challenge and the great mitzvah and the great opportunity of Tzitzis, and that's why Tzitzis is at the end of the Parsha. Take a look now. A word from Reb Shmuel Vital and Shar Absukim and Asar Mamoris. Reb Shmuel Vital was the son of Reb Chaim Vital. Reb Chaim Vital was great Dayan and Rav in Damascus, Damascus in Syria. He was the Talmud Muvik of the Ariza, who transcribed most of his writings, passed away in the 1600s, in the 17th century. And Reb Chaim Vital had a, safer, had a son, Reb Shmuel Vital, 
who was the one who actually published the writings of his father, which most Kisme Arizal we have because of Reb Shmuel Vital. One of the Arizal Svarim for Reb Chaim Vital is called Shar Hapsutim on Chumash. Over there he has a shtikel, and Reb Shmuel Vital gives a footnote. It just gives you a perspective. Zog Reb Shmuel Vital. Hoyil v'nafik mipumei derav nuchaloymar she'efsher lodunas ameraglim l'kaf schus. The Arizal brings over there a Torah. And that is why did Moshe Davin only for Yeshua, not for Kalev? Why not for Kalev? Why not for the other ones? So he says Moshe was afraid that Yeshua's life will be in danger. Why? Because at the end of Baha'u'llah, right before he sent the Miragam, Elden and May that started to prophesy. What did they say? You remember? Chazal say, they said, Moshe Meis, Yeshua Machlis Meis Rola Oritz. The Rizal says that's the Rosh Hashanah's Eldad Umeidad Misnabim Bamachana. Misnabim, Moshe, Tikoneis Nafshoi Began Eloikim Yeshua Machlisan. You got that? Misnabim, Moshe Tehei, or Tikoneis Nafshoi Began Eloikim. Moshe's soul will go into the garden of Hashem. Yeshua will take them in. Misnabim Bamachana already tells you what they said. Yeshua is going to go to Eretz Yisrael. The Miraglim are all going to think to themselves, of course he won't tell the Jews not to go into Eretz Yisrael. Because he's going to be the guy. Moshe is going to pass away. So he'll never join us. So he became the enemy in the eyes of the Miraglim. So Moshe had to dive in for them. For, for him, for Yeshua. Because he, he was in danger. So Shmuel Vital says, Hoyl v'nofek v'pome the Rabbi. This is what the Rabbi, the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria said. Then I have a new perspective on the Miraglim. And this is what he says. You know why they didn't want the Jewish people to go into it? Shmuel Vital Kainas, the Miraglim were obsessed with love for Moshe Rabbeinu. They knew they're going to take so Moshe is going to pass away. So they decided. We're going to betray Moshe. We're going to betray the Rats and Hashem. We're going to dissuade the people from going into Eretz Yisrael. And you know what's going to happen? We'll stay in the desert and Moshe will remain alive. And here we come to one of the most astonishing things in the whole story that people don't realize. Imagine, I send you on a particular mission that is very vital to me. You betray me. You cause mass hysteria. You destroy the whole plan. What do you think the punishment should be? You think the punishment should be to give in and give you what you want? That's exactly what happened. The Jews said, we're not going into Eretz Yisrael. We're not, we're not, we can't do this, it's not going to happen. What was the punishment? What was the punishment? The punishment was, okay. They lived 40 years, they had Moshe Rabbeinu, they had Aaron, they had the Man, they had Anani the Yaakov, they had the Shechina, they had the Torah, they had Meir Yishol Miriam, they had all the miracles, they had Moshe teaching Torah for 40 years. Exactly what they wanted. According to the above, we understand that the time of the Torah Hamidbar was, we don't want to go to Rachel, we want Leah. A chet it was, but it came from Dveikas, not from loneliness. Rav Shmuel Vital says even more. They were so in love with Moshe Rabbeinu they didn't want to lose him. And they knew they could get punished for it. So they sacrificed themselves so that Moshe Rabbeinu should be chai v'kayam. Moshe should stay alive and they were, it was fulfilled. He lived 40 more years because of them. So Rosh Hashanah writes. Comes the Helek HaSarim HaMoris. Mayim Rechik Rudin Helek Beis Berek HaSarim HaMoris is a sefer that was authored by one of the greatest poiskim and mukabolim of Italy. Passed away in 1620, Rabbeinu Menachem Azaria of Fanu, Italy. He's known as the Rameh Mipanu. He's famous for his Shalos and Shubas. So Rameh Mipanu. He has a say for Asorim Amorus. There's a machloikus in Sanhedrin that's called between Rebbe Lezer and Rebbe Akiva. Rebbe Lezer says, Doi Ramid Bor Yeshlom Chelek Lelom Haba. Rebbe Akiva says, Doi Ramid Bor Einlem Chelek Lelom Haba. Mid Bor Azei Yitlu Pigreichem Bisham Yitamu. They don't have a Chelek Lelom Haba. Zog the Gemara about Rabbi Akiva, Shofke la Chasidusei. Rabbi Akiva is Gemara in Ois Chasid. Rabbi Akiva lost his Chasidus. 
His piety, he said that they're Dara Midbain and Khalik Lamaba. Ask Sir Ahmed Mifano, how could Rabbi Kiva say such a thing? The whole Dara Midbain and Khalik Lamaba. The Gemara says he lost his chasidus. Shafki le chasidusa. He abandoned his chesed. We all know their greatness. Don't forget, they're the only ones who ever saw God. The only ones, face to face. These are the words of the Rabbi Mifanu. So Rabbi Kiva learns out, listen to his words. She'en lem tzoyrech they don't need Olam Haba. Einlem Chelek doesn't mean they don't have a part. They don't need the whole Olam Haba. Why not? Why does Rabbi Yechim get upset and say, Rabbi Akiva abandoned his chassidus, if this is what he meant? Because the way he said it, it can be interpreted wrongly. That they don't have a chelik loylam haba. He said it in a way that can have a double interpretation, positive or negative. And the reason he did that, he says later, is because he wanted to achieve atonement for their sin, Rabbi Akiva. But what he meant was they don't need loylam haba. What does this mean? It says about loylam haba. The Gemara it says at the end of Tainis that when loylam haba, all the tzaddikim, us that Kadosh Baruch Hu lasts machal tzaddikim. And everybody's going to point their finger. But Omar by Yoimahu, he may have a king who's there. This is Olam Haba. But hey, why do you love Max? But why Olam Haza? This they already did in Olam Haza. What do they need Olam Haba for? They already have it all here. Zach Kaley. This type of intimacy with the Rebbeinu Shalom they had in Olam Haza. So they're beyond Olam Haba. That's what they're beyond Olam Haba. They're beyond Olam Haba. This is what Rabbi Akiva says. Here again, fascinating. On one level, you talk about Dari Amid, you talk about the Miraglim, it says, Eilam Chelek Olam Haba, comes the Asar Imam Morris, and he says, beyond the Olam Haba, a sin it was. Sadikim, they also were. They have Gevold Zayin, and Eidim Afkes, as the Chidur Shorim says. According to all of this, we now come back to the first Gemara. Afilu Baal Habayis, Eino Yochel Ohoitzi Kelov. How could they be such koifrim and say Hashem can't do it? Everything we explain is Hashem. But what do they say? Hashem do kichazak We don't want to go fine. We don't want to start becoming farmers and merchants and businessmen and stressed out by life. But what say Hashem do kichazak umimenu? So in conclusion, I'm going to share with you a Torah that was shared by the Lubavitcher but based on this Likut Torah of the Balatanya, which explains this Mahalach, and it's in his Likut Sikhs volume 4, Parsha Shlach, from a talk of Shlach Tov Shechov 1962, I believe. The Vart is this. The Baramlum weren't Kaifrim. You had to be stupid to be a Kaifrim. As I said before, what do you eat for breakfast? What do you eat for lunch? What are you eating for dinner? In the middle of your speech, you were screaming, Somebody gave you a cup of water, yeah? Where did they get that cup of water that you're drinking while you're screaming? Oh, from this rock, how did that happen? That God, really? What's his halalus? The Miraglim had a much more sophisticated time. What they were saying is as follows. I understand that Hashem could lead us in a way that is supernatural, that is beyond nature. It's not a problem. It's his world. He can split a sea. He can make makas. He can give us a taita. It's his world. He's the ball of boss. He can do what he wants. I mean, we understand that that's what happened in Yitzhi Yitzhi Yitzhi. That's what happened. That's what's happening in the Midbar. But our issue is this. We all know that when we go into Eretz Yisrael, the same God who took us out of Mitzrayim supernaturally said, now boys, fun is over. You know, the cast is over. It's time to become independent. I'm here with you, but I'm here with you in a different way. It's in Teva. If that's the case, your boy Mishalayim is going to run the word Alpi Teva, fine. But now, let's look at the reality of nature. In the, re- nature, in the natural reality, like, Chazal describes 
the nature of the giants, describes the nature of the fruits, the clusters of grapes that they brought down lasted them for libations for the 40 years of the desert. There was a half a pomegranate, Chazal say, that all the 12 miracles hid into it was like a, a cave. Until the girl who opened the pomegranate thought her father's going to get upset, so she picks up the half a pomegranate and throws it over, and all of them fall out. So when they see all of these giants, they see all these realities, they say, Can Hashem take it over? Of course. Supernaturally, of course. But you can't have it both ways. If you're telling me we're going into Eretz Yisrael and I'm a halach of Ness, a supernatural pattern, fine. But on one hand, you tell me we have to plant and we have to sow. On one hand, you tell me we have to fight and we have to defend ourselves. On one hand, you tell me we have to create an infrastructure all based on natural circumstances. And that's the path we're going to take, and that's why you're sending spies, as the Ramban says, before you go conquer a place, that's the way to send a spy. The Ramban puts a, puts a, has an expression there, you have to check out the ramps, you have to check out the siege towers, the soil alloys, the ramps, he says, the seat you have to check, fine. If that's the case, with the cheshben of Teva, it's his Caleb, he made Teva. He gave Teva the power. Who says ain't soim chenal anesim? Who says we can't shemit nirushus l'roi for the rapus? You have to go to a doctor. Who says that the world runs in nature and you have to respect that and you have to work within those? It's his Caleb. He set up that system, and he wants us to uphold that system. He's not telling us. He's not telling us to go fly in heaven. He's, not, he's saying you're going to work in Teva. If that's the case, you can't have it both ways. Decide what you want to do. If you want to lead a supernatural gazunta, hey, let's go back to square one and start off. We'll do uh, delete and reset. Fine. But you want us to go with Teba, then you tell us you're going to conquer it. We don't know how long it's going to be. What was their mistake? Their mistake was the same you said. And the Yisoyed was, for them, there was a detachment between Yud. And hey, for them, Teva is Teva, and Lamailam in Teva is Lamailam in Teva. Heaven is heaven, earth is earth. But the Yisoid of Yiddishkeit is that earth is also heaven, and nature is also miraculous, and the body is a mirror of the soul, and nature is another expression of the supernatural. The Yud and the K are one name. Hakonof, Min Konof. It's the Zelbemin, the same Rebbeinish Lola who splits the sea, is the same one who gives you Parnassa through the vehicles of nature. The same Rebbeinish Lola who took you out of Egypt is the same one who walks with you in your daily interactions, and in your daily life, and your daily relationships in business or in your home or in the Shul and the Beis Medrash. It's the same reality. So therefore, if Hashem says that you should go and tear to Israel and you can conquer it, it's not... Pshat, that the laws of nature are going to be destroyed. Nature is also from him. So if nature is also from him, in Chafet Banu Hashem, says Kalev. If this is the Ratzon of the Rebbeinu Shalaylam, so this is what's going to happen in the natural world. It's a Zayn Velt. It's a Zayn Velt. That link, that integration, was too difficult for them to understand because they were holy, because they were sublime. They tell him, They tell a Misa that there was a child who uh, wanted a hundred, an anecdote, he wanted a hundred dollars. So he comes to his mother, he says, give me a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, go to your father. Goes to his father, give me a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. Gives him a dollar, he says, hey, go buy yourself a can of coke, and leave me alone. So what do you do when your father and your mother both reject you and don't give you a hundred dollars? You go to Hashem. So he writes a letter to Hashem, Dear God, Tati and Mommy refused $100, refused to give me $100, please, I need it. He puts it in an envelope, he stamps it, and he addresses it to the Lord of the USA. He thinks to himself, the Lord is everywhere, he must be in America too. He puts it in the post and it and puts it in the mailbox. He stamps it, the post office gets it, they see an envelope to the Lord of the USA. Who's the Lord of the USA? So the closest they can think of, they send it to President Obama. President Obama gets the letter, he opens the letter, a boy wants a hundred dollars, he feels bad for the kid, he tells the secretary, send him five dollars in the mail. The president thinks a boy will get five dollars in the mail, he'll be overjoyed. 
especially he gets it from the President of the United States, the Lord of the USA. The Jewish boy gets his five dollars, he looks at it, and he sits down to write a thank you letter to God. And the letter read as follows, Dear God, thank you so, so much for fulfilling my request and sending me one hundred dollars. However, I noticed that for whatever reason you were compelled to send the money through Washington. <laughs> and those idiots deducted 95% for taxes before they gave me the rest. So do me a favor, next time, if you could please send all the money directly. This is the question, and it's not an anecdote. The money comes through Washington, but not from Washington. They said, Ki Nature is nature. God made a system. Can't fight with a system. You want the system, it's a system. The Kichafitz Banu Hashem, the Tevar, it's Moid Moid, no, the system is also divine. Teva is also an expression of Lamaila Minat Teva. Ain Oit Mulvadoi. Einoit Mulvada means Kichoil Bashamayim of Ara. It says the Targum the Achid Bashamayo Bara. Earth is also heaven. Nature is also mess. The sun rising and the sun setting. The daily mechanisms of life within a world of nature is all divine. And therefore, if Hashem sent you into Eretz Yisrael, you don't need to call it a miracle in order to be able to be victorious. Within the world of nature, you will be able to triumph, you will be able to be victorious, because ultimately it's His nature. It's His world. Nature is also an expression of His will. It's His system. Balabayas, of course, he can be Moitzi Caleb. It's His Caleb, and He's in the Caleb, even when you call it the Caleb of Teva. So in conclusion, we have here one of the great fundamentals of Yiddishkeit that is expressed in this story. And that is that one of the greatest challenges that we have to avoid is the sense of insecurity, the lack of confidence when we have to face the big world out there and when we have to face the big gigantic world in here. And both of these often constitute tremendous threats and downfalls for Jews, for Oyvde Hashem. They feel they have no tools and resources, like the Miraglim felt, not recognizing that all the choshech, all the challenges from within and without, are only an invitation to be Megala Ein Oid Mulvada, even in the darkness, to fulfill the Nisava, Lias Loidiribatahtoinam, even in the Tahtoinam. So instead of worshiping the darkness, surrendering to it, and becoming defeated by it, their perspective has to be on the contrary. This is the place, this is the abode, where you fulfill the objective of existence to reveal the achtos, to reveal the unity in every nekuda of Shemayim and Avaris. Have a wonderful day. So I always had Jews that, you know, maybe they have to go that route to give chizik, I guess, to others. You know, you always had people, you know, like Yisachar and Zola, Yisachar and Zola. You always had people that remained segregated in order to be able to give inspiration to others. I don't think that's the problem. The problem is with the Miranda wanted the whole Klai to be that way. Oh, that was the yeah. It's not the Seder of Hashem. To have everybody completely isolated in the spiritual world, it's not the Seder of Bria Soil. The Miranda didn't say one group, which explains a Pella. And that is in Parshas Matas, you have the Bnei God and Bnei Ruvay who want to remain in Eved Hayyadim with the cattle. So one of the explanations of Svarim is that this was their union. They wanted to remain uh, with the cattle, with their like shepherds, you know, precious. more precious. And Moshe agreed with one condition. If they go help their brothers, and then they go back. Because the fact that there's a shevet or a group that needs to be that way, and on the contrary, it gives gives fuel to everybody else, that's fine. What the Miraglim did was, they wanted to change the whole course of, uh, of destiny. They wanted to undo the purpose of creation. So I think that's the issue.
I mean, it's a very practical question in today's uh, religious Jewish world, right? Where, where are we supposed to be heading?